Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh Emmett. I'm a UFC featherweight, currently ranked fourth in the world. Nice to see you. You too. Welcome in. Brian, Josh, great to meet you personally. I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but you know, I, I sure they're, I'm sure they're gonna ask me some, uh, you know, different questions. Flight was uh, pretty short. Yeah, sleep, it was right? like a 50 minute flight. I'm looking forward to their questions, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the interview. Boy, I gotta tell you, when I think blood and guts, and when I think big power, boy, there's not a few guys that you could put on that list, but we got one of them. He joins us now, Brian Campbell, Luke Thomas, and the winner circle right here himself, Mr. Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett, ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. Yeah, there he about. is. There he is. Josh, welcome. Cool. It's great to you? be here. I'm welcome doing really well. Welcome to the casting well. couch on Room Service <laughs> yes. Diaries. Right. This is gonna get weird and stupid. Uh, so welcome to the party. Let's do a quick update. I can see. Well, I guess they took out your stitches already. Yeah, my, my wife took them out uh, yesterday, I think. Okay. Yesterday or a few days ago. How are you yeah. feeling? Great. Yeah. Ready to rock. How, well, did the give us an update? What exactly did you get from this fight? In terms of, I see a couple of cuts. How many stitches did you get? Um, I'm not sure on the stitches. I think I got maybe like uh, I want to say ten total. You know, I had I had two little cuts on the inside of my um, my eye, and then I just had that big gash over the eyebrow. Um, that was I, the one that did the majority of the bleeding? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I, I had a small cut on there and, you know, Calvin opened it up and then it just got it just got bigger throughout the fight. Um, it just looked a lot worse than it actually was. You but know, you with, totally badassed us and you're like, <laughs> yeah, man, you know, it, it looked gnarly, but, you know, it was nothing. And <laughs> it was I, and nothing. I, but you know what? I believed you. Uh -huh. I did. I did. Because this guy's battled uh -huh. fucking Yeah, I'm going to okay. tell Let's see this. Did you get painkiller before you got the stitches? Um, I, I told him not to, but uh, Dude, I'm telling you that I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I had a feeling. Yeah, I've met uh, a few fighters. It's not universal, so, and obviously every situation is different. But there are some fighters that are like, yes, put the put the yeah, numbing on there, and there's other ones like, just let it rock. And, and a lot of times I do that when I, I always get stitch up backstage, and I'm like, I don't, I don't need the you know like the the numbing stuff, the shot, just give it to me. Um, and I, I said it this time too, but the the doctor still gave it to me. He wasn't he wasn't believing me. But my coach Joey, he's like. He doesn't need it. He, he sees it every time. But I'm gonna say this in a nice way. Yeah. That's a little psychotic. Yeah. It's a little psychotic. <laughs> well, to be fair, this is what I love about the moment you're in right now with this win streak. I we were talking off camera. I've never seen your face more on different podcasts on whatever. Yep. You're doing exactly what you should be doing. Given you, this is your window, this is your time. I have a lot of respect for that. Um, has it been fun? Has this been going the way? Has have things been starting to open up? Like you feel like. Maybe it is your time. Maybe though. Maybe though the company will agree with you the direction that you're ready right now. Man, I hope so. It's. Uh, I, I do feel like it's my time. I feel like there's no other matchup than to give me the the title fight. You know, just based off I can break it down why I deserve it, why I've earned it. Um, so I've been doing a lot of media, and uh, yeah, I'm having fun with it. You know, and I'm trying to get out there. I, I usually don't do a whole lot, um, but but I'm trying. Well, that, and know? that's what I'm saying. Like this is the first time. I'm like I'm thinking I'm like what do I know about Josh Emmett that he's a badass that I want to ask him these specific questions about these fights that I loved, and you know that he's a badass. You, we're now we're getting to find out a little bit behind the curtain. Like you almost I was telling Luke I'm like was he military? He's got like a Navy SEAL vibe. Not that you, I know. You kind of right? have that sort of like so where does all that come from? Where does this like lunch pail show up? Whatever it takes, guy come from? Well, my my initial plan was to go in the military um, out of high school. I was I was already enlisted in the delayed entry program. I was going to go in E3 That's private right. first class, um, but then I had my my junior college wrestling coach that he was watching me through high school, and he kind of he wanted me to come wrestle for him. So he actually called me and he's like, "Hey, I want you to come wrestle for us. All you have to do, I already signed you up for classes. You just have to come pick up your schedule." And then I was listening to my high school coach that I'm really close with still today, and he always told me, use wrestling as a tool to pay for your education. Mm -hmm. He's like, you have, you have your entire life to work. He's like, enjoy yourself. So I just kind of, I take everything in from people that are older than me, mentors and stuff like that, and I actually listen. You know, I don't just let it blow over the top of my head. And uh, I decided, I'm like, screw it. So I, I called the recruiter, and I, you know, I, I kind of, canceled that uh that plan and he was pissed you know he was so pissed and oh, he yeah. was trying you, you messed up his day yeah with I, 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 I messed up his commission so I know. he's yeah. got quotas okay? I, I yeah. messed up his commission whatever it is and he was trying to like give me all this bs to like hey you can wrestle for the army we'll get you signed up once you Dude, get through liars. basic i knew they're that liars. i knew that yes and so I, I i decided to to do that and i i think it's just like my my upbringing you know it's just uh gone there i had i don't know everyone has a not everyone, but some people have tough stories and tough times. And you know, my upbringing wasn't that pleasant. And I is I this think, in Arizona? No, I, I was born in Phoenix. Um, I 
lived in Sacramento since I was six months old. Okay. So Sacramento is home to me, except when I went away to college uh, to wrestle in the Bay Area, but it was like two hours away from Sacramento. Um, so I think it's just, you know, my upbringing and a little bit of everything just kind of molded me into to who I am. Well, when, who got you into wrestling and when did you start? Um, it was actually one of my, my best friends, his, uh, his father, he was my, my baseball coach in Little League. They came from a wrestling um, family. They had, you know, he had three boys that wrestled and uh, they just knew how athletic I was. And he's like, you need to come out and wrestle. I started when I was in like seventh grade, I want to say. Yeah, that's not that late, right? No. Some of, the, some of those guys are like, I've been wrestling since I was three. But, yeah, exactly. You know. So I've, I played sports growing up my entire life, uh, everything. Uh, I, I was always small. I always thought I was going to be a, a professional athlete, but I was thinking like, you know, I always say like football or basketball. Um, but then I got older and I, I stopped growing. So I knew that was out of the question and uh, or I wanted to be a police officer. So there's two things in my life I, I really wanted to do. And then fast forward, you know, multiple decades and, you know, I'm a professional athlete, you know, one of the best in the world. But it's it's I don't even think MMA was around when I was thinking about wanting to be a pro athlete. All right, but let's rewind the clock just a little bit to something he had brought up. Certainly I don't uh, share with whatever you're comfortable with, but we would like to get to know you in a better way. And so you had alluded to something of a difficult childhood. Everyone has something in their lives that can uh, uh, be challenging. But can you give us a context of how you grew up and, and to what extent you believe that molded you into what you've become to this point? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, my, my mom was a single mother. She raised my older brother um, and I. and. She worked multiple jobs, um, yeah, just to like kind of provide for us. We didn't have any money. You know, we had like 100 bucks a, a week, um, basically for food and fun. So like our outing would be to go to the dollar movie theaters. You know, we had these, so it'd be three bucks. We couldn't go to the concessions, uh, get any drinks or candy or popcorn. Um, and it was just my, my older brother. He kind of, he, uh, he just went down different path. You know, he, he hung out with the wrong crowd, got involved with the wrong people. He was you know, big into, you know, you think of every drug he was doing it, he was selling drugs, he was just, just a lot of, I don't know, just, just a lot of uh, dysfunction, I guess, going on, like cops always at our house, I was always, uh, I was always scared something was going to happen to my mom, um, so that's, that's what kind of got me into martial arts, like I started doing kung fu at a young age, and then I started wrestling, just because I wanted to, like, protect my mom, and uh, yeah, that's, you know, so much more in depth and in depth and so much more and he you know he suffered from addiction and mental illness and you know I think kind of ran in the the family with my father too you know my father same thing he had a uh, you know addiction you know alcohol and different substances and you know things like that so when, when so so with all of that being said and I appreciate your candor when did you when did you realize that sports was like an alternative? Or I, I, actually, let me ask you: How did sports feature into your life when it really began? Because you mentioned kung fu, I would consider that mm -hmm. also sporting activity beyond martial arts. When did sports really become to be a major factor in how you spent your days? Yeah, so it started out when I was, when I was younger. So it's uh, my mom wanted us to pick a sport. My older brother and I, um, he chose taekwondo. Um, I wanted to do that too, but then we fought at home all the time, and she's like, "You both can't do this because you'll just fight there." So he got to do that, and then I had to do something else. So uh, she found like tumbling for me. It was like acrobatics. It was just like floor work. I was like, I don't want to do that. But I, I was like, young. I want to be on the floor wrestling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I, so I did that. You know, I, I did that for a while, and I feel like I was doing that. I want to say when I was like in first grade, and so I, I had this like, like physique as a little kid. You know, I, I think I had pictures when I was like in second grade. I had a six pack, and I was like this rip little kid and then uh Jesus. you know then I played sports my my entire life just like rec sports because my mom didn't have any money to, for me to play comp stuff um and and that's kind of you know that's kind so of was it easy to, was to embrace the grind because you're known as a grinder of grinders in a sport that's yeah. a freaking Full grind it, yeah. man dude I I think wrestling is the hardest sport in the world yeah. you know I I really feel like a a seven minute match is harder than a 25 minute fight that I just had a few weeks ago um it's it's on another it's on another level you know even some of the 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 wrestling matches i did lose i'm like hey if we could throw punches i would have won like this guy wanted to beat me but uh yeah it's it's just like my mentality i think my mentality is my greatest attribute and i'm just like i'm willing to to go through hell i'm, I'm willing to put my body through whatever it takes to get my hand raised and uh yeah, just be successful. Dude, the hunger in your game is mm. remarkable. The bravery in the in the fight style too is there, but like 
hearing this now, it, I'm, it makes a lot of sense. And obviously, there's more to, to it than just those factors. But um, really, I, it's, I can see your story in your fight style, if that makes any sense to you. No, and, th and that's the thing. It's like I, I, I've seen a lot, and I was, I don't know, as a kid, I was, I was, <laughs> I was scared a lot. You know, I, I saw a lot of things kids shouldn't see. And, you know, just that's why when I'm going to fight someone in a controlled setting, I'm like, this shit does not scare me. Like, uh, I'll, I'll fight anybody. It's like, yeah. what's the worst can happen? You can lose that. And I've said that before. That's my biggest fear, you know, just because mainly financially, right. <laughs> you get half a check. But I mean, you're, you're, you're getting to a point where we like to get this close up with you to know more about you. But like, what are you also hoping to, to show about your, yourself that, you, that maybe you didn't get the chance because now you're in the spotlight suddenly? Um. I mean, did, I like, are you pushed to want to encourage people? Yeah, of course. That, that, that's why I continue to come back. You know, in the past, like, I, I don't like talking about injuries anymore, and people talk about that all the time, but that's in the past. Like, I'm, I'm not injured at all. I know, but I come back from these big things just because, you know, I want to inspire people. I want to give people hope. And, and it, like, anything that you want to achieve, you can. You just have to work towards it, and you have to, you know, you just have to, yeah, you, you just have to work towards it every day. You can't just manifest it. Otherwise, that's not going to do anything. Um, but yeah, all, all the time I, I get like, you know, messages from people just saying how like they, they've seen what I've gone through and, uh, you know, they thought of me when they're going through chemo or they're going through whatever they're going through and they're, you know, whether it's, you know, business related or relationships or, or just some, some fucked up situation, you know what I mean? And, uh, it, it is inspiring, but it's like, they're doing all the work. It's really yeah. not me, but it's cool that I can be somewhat of an inspiration to them. But when you fight this real and raw and honest as you do, I think Luke's right. People get a sense of like learning about you from that reputation that's currency to fans like mm -hmm. do you feel like you've gotten the the attention mixed with the respect you feel you deserve has it been equal for what you feel like not that you're not that you're out there just to entertain yeah. i mean it's a part of it yeah. you're there to win you're okay yeah. but when you fight that way like fan that matters to fans do you think it's connected enough yeah no and, and i do aim to like i want to be entertaining i i know what like the fans want to see like you're saying and dana white in the ufc and i, I wouldn't be in the position i am if i wasn't fighting that way um but yeah as far as like recognition and stuff goes like I could care less, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, the only people that really matter to me are my friends, my family, the people that are in my circle, like, that know me. So whatever, you know, I could care less what people really think. They, they, they don't know me then, yeah. you know, that's the thing. What about so. your peers, though? Yeah. Like, in the sense of, uh, do you feel like among other fighters you are sufficiently respected? Yeah, I would, I would think so, yeah. but, I, but I really, I don't know. Like, I, I just treat people how they treat me, you know what I mean? But for the majority of the part, or majority of the time, like everyone's pretty respectful everyone i fought is you know i i give them nothing but the utmost respect and they're they're like good good people you know what i mean and at the end of the day we're all trying to achieve the same thing we're all trying to win provide for our families like you know be successful and i would think at the end of the day everybody wants to be a world champion otherwise why the hell are you doing this like go do something <laughs> else you know because you can't come in here and uh just like oh it's I think I can win, or you know, if if you don't have complete confidence in yourself, like, do you need to you need to pick something else to do? I mean, you're coming on, people can see that. Um, it's been wild, man. It's been wild to see you kind of build this in increments because it's not without setbacks. It's not without having in, to endure some physical toll yeah, that is we, just yeah. insane. Yeah. So, did you ever feel in that journey with some of those pitfalls that like maybe I won't match my window? Like I'll always know I was good enough to fight for a title or be a champion or however far you're going to go. But like, not everybody gets the chance. It doesn't always line up, you know? It, it's, it's come together. Does it feel like now is the time? Like, this is the perfect time. Like, this is how the story had to go? Oh, perfect. Like, exactly. You, you kind of, you nailed it. It's uh, everything that's happened, you know, in, in my, you know, my career with, you know, adversity and injuries and obstacles. It's like, I'm grateful for it, you know, because cause what I've come back from, uh, and now I, I literally have the best team behind me, like the best team from like all my therapists, my coaches, my dietitian, like everybody. It's, it's down to the science. So I feel like I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And if, you know, one door closes and, and I was pissed that this big opportunity did not happen, I'm like, man, I used to get so pissed. And then, uh, you know, it would always lead me to something bigger and better. So I, I literally, when something, not even bad, but when something good doesn't happen that I really want, I'm just like, it wasn't meant to be. Like, something bigger and better will happen, and, and I truly believe that in every single time. So, um, 
yeah, who, who knows, you know, but I feel like I'm, it, it is, it's part of my story, it's my journey, and, and, and I feel like it's, man, we're right there right now, like, I feel like it's literally our, like, it, I've been saying it for, for months and months, it's our time, and that's for well, all my supporters and all my coaches and everyone that invests in me, I'm like, you know, their, their ROI is going to pay off here real soon. What did it feel like when you, I mean, when you enter the Calvin Cater fight, it's like, it's go time. I mean, it's all, like all or nothing. I mean, it is, it, this at, is. At 37, that was a, you know, to get the title shot. Yes. That, that was, that was, that was must win territory. And to your so. credit, oh, by yeah. the way, you yeah. fought with the same spirit against Shane Burgos. Now I almost want to talk about that separately because oh, I love we that will. fight so much. But you get through that and it's close and it could, I mean, it was just, it was a beautiful fight. And then you deliver that promo that that is like I can hear the emotion and that yep. you know Dana I give me the like you know you you met that moment and you brought it how good did that feel what what does that feel like when you're delivering that yeah no no it felt it felt great like like I know what I'm capable of my coaches my teammates like people that know me know exactly what I can do like even when I was wrestling in college my my coaches would hold me on this like on this pedestal you know what I mean and and I, I didn't do everything I should have done and, and that's why I have regrets in college not being a national champion and that's why I'm like all in on fighting like yeah. I, I do everything like to the T and I, I do not cheat the 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 you know the whatever the the, the regimen I, I just stick to it. eight eight weeks out seven weeks out and uh but yeah everything it worked out it worked out perfect you know I, I also feel like I don't know. I just didn't have a sense of urgency. I felt like I was kind of, to a sense, coasting in that fight. And mm -hmm. it, it looked, okay, Leah, my face, I'm bleeding. It, it looked like a crazy war, but it was relatively, it sounds crazy, but an easy fight, you know? Like, I that's, feel... That is crazy. No, that's crazy. I, 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 I feel great. Like, <laughs> like, five days after, like, my bot, nothing hurts. Like, it normally will take, like, weeks or a month, and mm -hmm. I still am sore and stuff, but mm -hmm. I, I, feel, I feel great. Well, his body got uh, roasted. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I, I feel phenomenal, and he, he's, a, he's a great athlete. He comes from a great team and coaches and everything. And, um, but, yeah, I, just, I, I didn't feel like I, I needed to press the pace as much. I watched the, the film afterwards, and I was like, oh, I could have done so much more. But I thought I was, I thought I was winning, so I just kind of just... I mean, if you don't get know. that decision, and, and there's arguments both ways, yeah. and, again, beautiful <laughs> fight, like... You may not be, be back at this point. You don't know. Like like yeah. so that's Did you yeah, did you have like a fifth round like all or nothing sense or what was your no. focus? I, I thought I won one through three and then the fourth round was close. We're like, okay, give it to him and then yeah. you know the fifth round I was just like I was just kinda just I really have no game plan going in there. I'm just um, just fighting, you know, and uh, like I'll never quit. I'll Wait, never... You, don't, you don't game plan? No, no, I just go in there, I'm going to fight. Like if, if he was just That's tearing me up on my feet, then yeah, then I would actually try to take him down. But I was just kind of level changing and I would do fit-ins. I wanted him to think about that, but I wasn't, I wasn't trying to take him down. And, and uh, Brendan Fitzgerald nailed it because he's like, Josh is 0 for 4 in the takedowns, but he really hasn't tried. And I was like, oh, yeah, how, how do you know that? <laughs> I, I would just try, to, I, was, I was trying to get him guessing on that so I could change levels and hit him with big shots and then I was just trying to break dirty with elbows and things like that but um, yeah I don't what, know. what are the core let me ask you this way what are the core insights that that make up your game when you think about why you do certain things in the fight game what are you trying to do for let me give you an example like a lot of people like I don't want to uh, stand switch because I really believe that everything that has to come from that is motion I believe motion sets up angles motion sets up blah 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 mm -hmm. some kind of insight what are the core insights that drive your offense Man, it's it's just me being confident in the power. Like I know I can land big shots. I I can, I can do it all too. I can wrestle. You guys haven't seen me on the ground yet, but I'm, you know, I, I I'm pretty good at jujitsu too. Um, mm. I, I'm good everywhere. But it's like I, I can switch stances. I can I can emulate people a lot. Like even when I was you know one and zero as an amateur, one and zero as a pro, I was the main training partners for so many guys at Team Alpha Male. Um, I, I've been with Uriah since he opened the gym in 2005. Uh, b besides like a, a three-year layoff where I went down to college and wrestled and got my degree. Um, but, but I knew where I, I, I kind of like stacked up with going with number one contenders, world champions, like people that come all over the world and I, I can go with them. So I, I can really emulate anyone's style if I watch it. Um, and, and Let me ask you this way then. Who's your favorite striker? Could be any sport, kickboxing, boxing, mm -hmm. MMA, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And tell me why they're your favorite striker. And my favorite striker. I'd have to say uh, Mike Tyson and, and uh, Canelo. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, yeah, just boxing. I feel like even Tyson, he was, he was short. He was a powerful guy for, you know, 
heavyweights and he would he would you know have to put himself in the fire he'd have to get inside to land those vicious blows and knock people out and, and same thing with Canelo I feel like he's he's so good defensively and then he's just uh he's just a powerful guy like when he's you know he's he's breaking people's like orbitals with his, his boxing gloves mm -hmm. and you know he's so damn powerful and yeah. it's just like just the way they they use their like their core to extremities and their rotation and everything's just technically sound but they're so powerful it's like I, I would say those are my two favorite um, strikers. That's know, interesting. And in, 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 in MMA, anyone stand out to you? Yeah, there's so there's so many great, um, yeah, so many great fighters. Um, like even just uh, my, one of my favorite fighters of all time was always Tito Ortiz. Like I've been watching the UFC since '99. Uh, you know, ordering the pay per view when there was only one call. two a, a, <laughs> a year. You know, before his mainstream, before the Ultimate Fighter. Um, I, I liked all those like like the legends and the, the pioneers of the, the sport, you know, like Randy Couture, Liddell, Tim Sylvia, all these, all these guys. But Do you take it as a compliment that the first time I saw you fight in the UFC, a couple of fights, and I'm like, well, I like this guy. He's like featherweight Shane Carwin. I was oh, like, wow. this guy's a badass, you know what I mean? Dude, Shane Carwin <laughs> sent, Chris, remember when he sent uh, Christian Wallace's mouthpiece into orbit with a single right hand? Remember that? I, I don't remember. Oh, no, no don't you're a different it. fighter. You're a much more well-rounded yeah. fighter, but I just, you know, from that, you kind of have like that look and just that, I'm going out there to fight, man. You know what I mean? That, that's what's going to happen right now. You know? Yeah, and that's the thing. I, I feel like, okay, I've had, you know, a, a few losses. I, I still, and then one controversial thing, but I still feel like, no, nobody's gonna just beat me up. No one's gonna like manhandle me. No one's gonna beat me up. You know what I mean? I got caught one time. It was a little controversial, but it, it is what it is. So it's like, I, I, I just feel like uh, I'll always be in the fight. I'll always be a threat. Um, and that's just like my mindset going into thing. It's either stupid or crazy, but I'm, like I said, I'm willing to go through anything as long you, as I get my hand. Do you ever right. fear that? <laughs> Because you some you know you get in there you show it man you've yeah. shown it in a couple of fights you've whether it, you know wasn't damaged whether whether it wasn't as bad as it looked or not it could look that bad to the ref to the referees okay. does that ever factor into your mind no you, yeah this last fight kind of scared me because I I didn't realize how like I was bleeding like who cares but then the the cut man he keeps telling me like because I keep going to the cage and seeing like Uriah and Andre and stuff like that because they're I'm like three rounds they're like yeah you're up three rounds. And then he's like, get over here. He kept telling me. And I'm like, I'm fine. And he's like, start protecting that eye. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not that bad. And he's like, start protecting that eye. And then when I saw the doctor come in, in the, after the fourth round, and I, I did the same thing to him. I'm like, I'm good. And then he's like, come over here. I'm like, I'm good. He's like, I need to see your eye. And then I was like, of course. Can you see? Yes, sir. Like, you know, if I couldn't, I'm not saying anything. So, um, <laughs> I mean, but that's part of the fight that you have to win. You have to win that moment with the referee. Yeah, and, it's a little and, bit of luck too. But yeah, yeah, or exactly. Or the state commission. In certain states, uh, they'll call it fast. Other ones, not so much. No, okay, I, so I, you, I been mixing yeah, that, so, yeah. what you had to get through with that, with kind of not sweating out, but like waiting to see what the decision is. When it all goes your way, are you like, oh, it's fate now, it's destiny? I mean, is that part of like how you look at it? Like, no, oh, this this confirms I'm I'm going to win this championship. Like, the, 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 yeah, no, I I just have this 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 strong, strong belief in myself and my abilities. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all like, I, I knew beating Calvin Cater would be like the start of everything. Um, yeah, and here we are. So we, we have to see what, what pans out on Saturday and in the coming weeks. But I, but I really feel like there's no other fight to make than me fighting for the title. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, I'm sticking to that. It's like, uh, I want to hear it from Dana White, though. Let me let me let me jump in here because you mentioned something. I want to use that to go to this moment, the controversial one. I'm assuming you're talking about the Jeremy Stevens fight, mm -hmm. yes. So can we talk about the injuries you suffered from that contest? Because those were I, I those were they were they were pretty bad. Can you tell me tell what the audience? Yeah, my were? response to that was this guy wants it. That was my response. Yeah, to, no, to like you, it's remarkable. It's, yeah, but I would still like to know like what you had to endure uh, through that yeah, process. Yeah, I don't know. It's like going back to it happened. Man, I don't even know. Four over four and a half years ago, it was just. Some facial fractures and vertigo. And Did you lose uh, feeling in part of your gums? Yeah, this I have this big piece that's uh, numb still, but it's like I just feel like it's it's just another. I don't know. It was a small setback. It's like uh, things just didn't go that didn't go my way that night. But it's like that's why they have instant replay now. You know, right. what I mean, it's from that that fight. So if that can help other people, like uh, so they don't have to go through what I did over the that long horrible period of time. Like I'm happy, I'm grateful for that. You know, I'm I'm literally grateful for uh, 
the way that that turned out. This you know? sounds like the origin story to like Rambo's life or something. Like <laughs> yes. seriously, like this is ridiculous. You know? Have you ever had any kind of injury that did give you not like you crushed your willingness, but you maybe worried about your athletic capacity as a consequence of it? Yeah, of course. Like that, that would have been one of them. You have vertigo. It's it's the worst thing. I don't know if you ever had it. No. It's like, uh, like I say, it's like being on a, a ship in the in the middle of the ocean during the worst storm. Like I don't wish it upon my worst enemy. Mm. Um, yeah, of course the the ACL. But I, I came back from that too. It's yeah. You actually look pretty spry. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So I I. I, I I, I feel good now. It's like those are all in the past. It's like, you know, it's, it's a little worse than spraining your ankle, but I just kind of relate it to something like that. It's like, okay, I have a small little bump, a little bruise, I'm just out for a little longer than most people. But uh, I, I know I'm going to come back. I'm going to, you know, with time, time heals everything. And, you know, I'm going to get back to my, my being athletic and, and that it just drives me. It, it drives me so much. Um, whether I'm doing physical therapy, what, whatever I'm doing, I work with a mental coach. Uh, I'm just constantly just working and trying to trying to solve the problem. Well, just nothing the about thing. this guy's backstory was like given yeah. to him. Like Dude, yeah, you no. were never the favorite in any of these steps along the way. I mean, that's 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 an inspirational as shit. Making but like, your own destiny, right? but like now you get the chance to yeah. to become the favorite guy. It's like, but you you don't lose Maybe. that spirit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you don't lose yeah. that spirit that 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 drove you to man. That's um, but that's going back to me just inspiring people. It's like okay, I was never like look, at, I, I'm not the the tallest guy, the biggest guy, the fat everything. It's like. People talk about age, but I, I think I just have more experience. I feel the best I've ever felt. Like, I feel better now than when I was 27, you know, with just that team that I have. Um, like, everyone is just, there. they've invested and helped me out so much. So it's like, I, I do so much individual stuff, you know what I mean? And it's all tailored around me, and, and they all talk, and I kind of just figure out the best way to, to map out, whether it's my, my weight cut, like, you know, my performance, whatever it is, and it's like that... I'm grateful with. Okay, that. why does your pursuit of the championship mean this much to you? Because your pursuit is like all freaking in. Like you're gonna, you know, you need some luck. You need a lot of things, but you are. There's no gonna be no stone unturned with you. No, not at all. Um, no, it's just it's what I'm trying to do for my my family, my wife, my mom, like my my close friends and family. It's just like I, I have a plan, and it's like you know we're getting closer and closer. And like you said, no stone will be left unturned. And you know, it's uh, it's all, all like big like finances too. You know, it's uh, like right now we're in the process of building my mom a, a ADU, like a, a one bedroom house in our backyard right now. It's nice. like um, I, I'm glad I got that win two weeks ago because that's gonna help fund the project because this is like super expensive. We, we live in Sacramento and California; it's tough to get permits and all these things. So it's like, yeah. So it's I'm trying to set up my my family for for success too, and uh, just do things that we we've always dreamed of and you know and I'm grateful for the UFC because like my wife and I bought a house we've been traveling the world doing things that we always dreamed of and we weren't sure if like are we ever going to really be able to do this yeah and we've been doing it so it's like it's only going to get better and better and and that's what motivates me too and like lights this fire like underneath me because the better I do the better everyone else will do and the businesses I'm a part of and stuff like that so that's some wholesome shit right there yeah, Luke it's, okay it's, that's, I know, that's so, an honest story so, so I know I'm going in there by myself fighting but it's like I, I'm thinking about all them and like my wife will be the first one to say it's like I only fight for the money like I, I'm not one of those guys that oh, I just want to be the best fighter on the planet like that'll come but you know I I 100% fight for the money I've always said that um you know, and, and I feel like I'm in too deep, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, it's a lot invested, yeah, right? Yeah, Can a we, lot. Let's talk about some of your contemporaries yeah. because now mm -hmm. you got, and the UFC has some interesting decisions to make. So let's talk about the other one that is sort of in the ballpark beyond Max and Volk, which is next month it will be Yair Rodriguez taking on Brian Ortega. Mm -hmm. Set up this fight for me. How, how, do you, how do you see this one? It's always hard to, to, to argue or pick fights, you know, because I can argue how Yair gets done, how... Um, uh, Maybe what you think it might look like then. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it, it's like the old traditional like striker versus grappler. You know, I think Ortega has some of the best jujitsu in not only just the featherweight division, but even in the UFC. And then Yair, he he he's so unorthodox. He's so fast. His striking is is really good. Um, so it, it's hard. We'll see how it, it plays out. But I feel like if Ortega can, you know get him up against the cage or, or maybe hit him with the hard shot. He's a, he's a, he's a big featherweight as well, you know, and so he has some power. Um, I just feel like if Ortega can get his hands on him or get it to the ground, you know, he, he can get the job done. But I also feel like Yair, um, he looks phenomenal in his last fight against Max. Mm -hmm. And so 
you know, I, I could see him, you know, catching Ortega with something. Um, now, as part of you going like, okay, cool, they're going to fight, you know, best of luck to the winner, but just don't do it spectacularly. Don't get in my way, <laughs> all right? No, I really... What, 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 what do you think, it, uh, what is the case for not giving the winner of that fight a title shot in your mind? They've, What's, they've, give, give, like, for example, if you look just at the rankings, it's basically Max and, 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 uh, and Volk at the top, right, yeah. obviously. And then it's, yeah, I'm not sure the exact position. But or Tegan, then you're at, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you are in there. So you're in that, you're in that, all of those are interchangeable. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, what would be the case for a skeptic to be convinced that that winner doesn't deserve it over you? I feel like both of, they're obviously both coming off of losses and they fought the best guys in the world. So it's, uh, <laughs> one of them's going to win. One will be on a one-fight winning streak. They've already fought the guys, except Yair hasn't fought Volkanovski. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on a five-fight winning streak. I beat guys in the top ten. I beat guys in the top five. You know, I, even, I was talking to Ariel the other day, and he was like, oh, you should fight Arnold Allen. And I'm like, why would I do that? You know, he's a good fighter. He's 9-0. and oh. um, Has he beat anyone in the top ten? No. Um, You're like, yo, Ariel, do you know how much blood I poured to get to this point? Get off my back. Yeah, nobody yeah. makes me bleed my own blood. You know, uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I, you know, I, I just feel like, I feel like that's why I'm like, this is the only fight to make. You know, I'm the only person that hasn't fought the elite fighters, and that's Volkanovski or Holloway. The guys in front of me have, and they're great fighters. They also haven't been as active, but they stay right there. They stay in the top. Mm. You know, it, I feel like me, I, I've been not that high. Um, but they move me, they keep moving me out. If I was inactive for that long, I'd, I wouldn't even be in the top 20, you know what I mean? But they stay right there. So it's like... I, well, once I, you, get the, you get the blessing from the big fight, even if you lose, you kind of hang around that yeah, orbit, they just right? Yeah, they just hang out there. Like, Interesting. It, it's like I'm ranked a certain ranking, or I was in the past, and then it's like, then on fight day, they, they show it on the screen, and I'm, I'm two rankings behind. I'm like, how the hell did that happen? You know what I mean? They're like, they're moving me down, and, and nothing even happened. Or like... Like I said, Alan, Arnold Allen's a great fighter, but I don't know how he got ranked in front of me. Like, I really don't. He never beat anyone in the top 10. He beat Dan Hooker his last outing, and Hooker's a great fighter too, but he, that was his first fight at featherweight since he had previously fought there a long time ago right. before going up to lightweight. Right. So I, I, don't, I don't understand the, the rankings. I don't, I don't understand who does this. And even going it's back... It's not us, by the way. <laughs> no, I, I know. And you, you guys even had my back when... Uh, <laughs> when something had happened like previously a long time ago after i fought burgos oh that's right yeah you so i, I appreciate that you know because yeah you guys were saying nothing but good things and something happened i forgot what it was but yeah it was already it was already like premeditated before that fight i guess the rankings i don't think the rankings are premeditated i just think the the media panel that does them okay. they're not this sounds disparaging the, the, the places you go and do interviews, those people don't do the rankings. There are some good people on the rankings panel in okay. defense, but there are some ones where there's a lot of just really questionable calls coming in, okay. right? I don't think it's premeditated in, in that sense. No, but I thought just for that particular incident oh, with I me, see. it was something like if I was going to lose, then I was going to be like 11 or something. And oh, Virgos oh yeah, sometimes, it, yes, that's those little, I mean, yeah. I don't think it's premeditated, but they'd right. be like, okay. sometimes people can just swap positions, okay, okay. and so they kind of know in that way. Yeah, yeah. it's all a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but, but what wasn't bullshit was that Shane Burgos fight. And mm. can I tell you what I love most about it? You were both willing to risk it all. And, and like, that's a weird, stupid thing to say. And it's a, like, of course, you guys are, you, you're warriors. But that fight had so much stakes to where you were trying to go mm-hmm. that, like, again, if you lose that fight, you, you may not be sitting, you know, right here, right now. You both, though, fought with that same spirit. It was like, that's my equal Spider-Man meme. Um, it, it was beautiful because of that. There was, like, a next level's kind of, like, ambition to it. It was just, like, like it was, it was, it was artwork. Um, <laughs> How confident were you in that one going your way? Yes, same. You know, it was a unanimous decision. I, I, I thought it was, uh, we gave him one round, and, and Burgos, man, he's, yeah, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good dude. He's a friend of mine. You know, he's like, uh, he's fighting the 16th. I wish him nothing but the best. I think he's going to get the job done. But, uh, yeah, it was, he's, he's a big guy. He's a tough guy, I'll tell you that. That was a, that was a tough fight, that, for sure. That was a, that was a hard fight. Uh, he, he's super fast. He's, he has, his reach is so long. It was like 74 or something. And he, and he, he could, you know, he can crack. Like, can you feel the aura, though, that I'm, I'm sort of romanticizing? Like, can you feel it from him that, like, 
he's going to do whatever it takes to win this fight. Like, yeah, no, and, and, it's, and it can be different sometimes against other people. Yeah, no, no, I, I could feel, and, and luckily he kept pressuring me, you know, because like I did blow out my knee in the first 20 seconds of the first round. And he kept coming forward, and with his, his just height and his reach, just another obstacle. Uh, he yeah. you know, he, <laughs> he could have used his 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 reach, you know, and stayed on the outside, you know what I mean. But he kept coming forward because he wanted to try to make a statement. He wanted to finish me, you know. So he kept coming forward, and I was like, "Thank you, boom," you know. But uh, yeah, it, did you? It, the, you the, it, it was just a ridiculous exchanges at times. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, he did he with, with some good shots as well, yeah, but then course. delivering on them back. That was like, do, when you're in those fights, like when you go back after the first and second round, are you like, Jesus, this is a, woof, this, I, okay, this one lived up to expectations. Do you ever, ever have like a realization about that in the moment? No, not, a, not in the moment. I, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm always asking my coaches, you know, because the only thing that I'm, I'm thinking of is like, I'm getting hit. You know, that's the only thing I'm, I'm not thinking about how I'm landing or the combinations I'm putting together. So I, I'm just so confident in my coaches I trust them they know me so well so I'm just like how was that round they're like oh we won that round or it's like a video game like they'll say things to do and, and I'll actually do it. I won't do it right away but I'm listening I've always been very coachable and so I I, I just you know I, I I rely on them and I you know I just constantly am talking to them in the corner and, and getting feedback and trying to process everything if I oh you go ahead no I was gonna say how do you how do you juggle your superpower being that like <laughs> like you're you're a great action fighter, not a brawler because there's so much technique going on. But you're you're a great brawler, man. You're like a you know you go to war. That's a superpower. That's your strength. You can argue you won your biggest fights because of that. But is it ever your weakness where you're like, damn, I didn't. That didn't need to be that that crazy of a round. You know what I mean? I didn't need to exchange like that. No, like, you, yeah, you're probably right, but or do you, or is that not or is no, part I, of I don't even think about that. No, I'm I'm gonna do it every single time. Like I, I'm gonna <laughs> I will put myself into to. To throw myself into the fire, but I'll take ten punches to land one big shot. You know, I'll, like I'll take five jabs and I'll, I'll land. Like everyone says, I only have the overhand right. Like, all right, well I'm gonna hit you with it in fifteen or twenty five minutes. You know, that's crazy. So. Give me the case though. I am curious to circle back to something you said. Now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, what is the argument for not making a game plan? And understand the question, like in the sense that not every game, not every team has like super detailed game plans that could be general ones mm -hmm. right i'm not saying everything is down to the detail but why would you not game plan help me understand why that you think that's better for getting wins well, well just for me it's I, i've always done that every single fight like I, I can do everything really well so it's like i'm what what if the game plan is hey let's just go in there and take him down like what if i can't you know or um then, then what do you do you have you have plan b I, i'm just going in there to, <laughs> to to beat somebody up you know and, and get my hand raised so um, but you're problem solving in the moment. No, as yeah, well. no, I, I'm, I'm making, I'm making adjustments. I'm, do you I, scout pre-fight? Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay. I watch, I watch okay. so much film oh, okay, on okay, people. Okay, so okay, I'm like, yes. I, I, I thought pick, you were going in there like I don't watch tape. No, I just no. go in there. And I rehearse. watch a lot of tape. I, I see like tendencies that people are doing that they've been doing in their previous, you know, three, four, five fights that they're not going to be able to fix in a seven, eight week camp. Um, and, and I'm going to try to capitalize on it. So I, I have in, in my mind this. Uh, I wouldn't say a game plan, but just certain things when they throw certain strikes or they're doing certain things, yeah. like I'm, I'm going to try to counter Okay, them. that makes total sense. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. I understand. I'm not just winging it, but <laughs> okay. you know, maybe. I was like, dude, yeah. for winging it, you got pretty you good at it. You know what? I, I, I kind of wanted him to say he was oh. just winging it. So that's like, that'd be pretty bad. That'd be like, yeah, yeah, that'd be like yeah, extra yeah. badass, yeah. you know what I mean? On top of that, no, I'm kidding, obviously. But, uh, man, this win streak has been commanding. Um, I don't, I, I'm not kissing your ass. I really don't think they can do anything but give you the title shot. I mean, it's it's. Who else has had the five fight win streak on, and then like had to go through so much? And highlight reels point. too. Let's not forget. You no, know, like, I mean like the Michael Johnson KO. That's like a highlight reel forever. Like remember when yeah. Dustin Poirier finally got that time title shot? You know, twenty five minutes to make you know the you know the damn saying. Make life fair. Yeah. Uh, you, you can you connect with that? Twenty five yeah. minutes. To, the Teddy Atlas quote. I got twenty five uh, minutes to make life fair. No, I, I did not see that, but I yeah, I can definitely I can definitely relate to that. And, I, and I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> Let, just say, I, I just need the opportunity. That's, that's all it is. Like, I need the opportunity, and it's like I will show the world how good I am. You uh, know? Let, let's, let's talk about those matchups then. Yes? Okay. All right, just some fancy matchups. And I'm not going to ask, like, who would you rather? Let's go piece by piece. Uh, fight Max Holloway. What, what goes through your mind when you think about that? You know, he, he's arguably one of the best featherweights of all time. It would be, uh, it would be an honor to fight him. He's one of the elite uh, fighters. And I know, like, he always says there's levels uh to the fight game and and you know i feel like i'm right there too dude that would be um, a great fucking so, so fight I, that I would fought, be I fought, an incredible I fight i fought i fought like 
everyone that I fought, everyone's taller than me. So it's like I, I've been and I fought at uh, 55s on the regional scene. I fought as high as 170. I fought people that are like 5'10 to 6'4. Um, so it's like, I don't know how tall Max is at 5'10, 5'11, something like that. Um, he's pretty tall, yeah. Uh, maybe six foot, you know? So yeah, he, he's great. He, he has a gas tank for days. His, his output and volume is on another level. Um, but like I said, like, people always think I'm going to get tired and like, oh, this guy's on the gas. No, I don't think that. I, I will. <laughs> no, worry. but a lot of people, like, I'll match and beat anyone's gas tank. So it's like, I, he, he does have a great, you know, great gas tank. But I was like, I, I can run a, a marathon pretty fast too, you know? So I will never get tired in a fight. That's for sure. And I'll always have that power. You know, and I, I think I, I showed it even in my last fight, you know, people are like, can this guy go five rounds? I've been training five, six rounds my entire career, you know, because I, I used to fight on the regional scene. I was a lightweight champion. We didn't really go the, the distance, um, but, I, but I'm, I can always go multiple rounds and beyond the five rounds. So, yeah, it would be a, yeah, it'd be a dream match. Let, me, let me pause this after Max and just sidebar real quick. To be in this many action fights and to overcome them, there has to be like that sadistic party that's like, yeah, there's normal, man. I like this. So when you look at when we're talking about yeah, these, you have normalized terrifying events. So when we <laughs> talk about these myths, like yeah. I never even really visualized the idea of you versus Max until like this morning. Somebody on our team mentioned it, and I'm just like, oh shit, that's a great ass fight. Mm -hmm. Do you get that same feeling where you're like, this is what I love to do. I'd love to see what it's like to get in a brawl with Max. I mean, does that is that like is that like almost like not? I don't want to sexify it. But it's like this fight. Give, this fight, give me a phoner. No, I don't want to go that weird, you know. But uh, thanks, but thanks for saying. It, it's it's the same energy though. Yeah, but no, I've I, I've, ne I've never thought about it. Like I want to, I want to. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Give me a phone or whatever the hell you're. Yeah, no, uh, no, that, but, that's, that's, but no, no. I, I, I've, it's I've, a Jake Hager original. I, I've never thought about like oh, I just I just thought like at, a long time ago when Max was a champion. I'm like I'm gonna end up fighting this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like because he was a champion, but then Volkanovski is a champion now. But yeah. But, I don't know. I, I've never like, I don't know. I've never th yes, like, you, thought you about it. It would be, be great that, to get in a brawl with Max, but I always wanted to fight. Whoever has the belt, I want to fight. Listen, don't worry. He you pitches know? me a lot of ideas. That, oh, you know, they, 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 they don't out, leave though, the writer's room. They're, no, but right. they're brilliant <laughs> upon, upon releasing. Um, I know you want to ask about current featherweights, yes, yes. but we can't have like a featherweight conversation without talking about the greatest featherweight of all time is to beat Magomed Sharapov. <laughs> And no, 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 hear me out, all right? You know I love that man. I love that man. You got me with that one. That was the first This is a legit with. question. I'm not, you're, I'm not here good. to try to get you to talk trash. Do you think he would have been as great as I am convinced that he would have been? Or do you think he would have just been eventually just another guy, at the, you know, in the, in the upper tier, but just another guy? I don't know. Man. Yeah. No, I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know. He, he's a good fighter. Was he undefeated? Is he, is he uh, undefeated? I think did he maybe lose? he had one draw or something. In you know, the UFC? You know, people think... No, he didn't lose in the UFC. Okay, though. yeah, so he's undefeated. People think Cater no. exposed him a little. I, I don't know if I'm getting down like that. You know? yeah. No, but I, 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 he's a great fighter. You know, who, who knows? Like, he, he never fought those elite guys, you know? BC, so, BC is yeah. just sort of convinced, like, the conspiracy theory <laughs> That's that guy. Had, his, <laughs> had he not had this sort of, like, hiatus and then change of career, that he would have gone on to be, like... You know, Luke Skywalker. Or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Darth but like Vader. episode six, Luke Skywalker, when yeah, he was yeah. full Return Jedi, Jedi wearing all black, Jedi Jedi bad All right, so let's go back here real quickly if we can. Uh, Volkanovski, uh -huh. walk me through a fight like that. What do you think? I think him and I match up stylistically the best, you know, and, and for the first time in my Not a taller opponent, right? My career, I would be the, I'd have the height advantage. Wow. He'd still Man. have the reach on me, though, you know, by an inch. But, yeah. um, no, he, he he's the best right now, you know, he he's... He's the best. Like, he's undefeated in the UFC, beat these guys that are, like, so good. You know, Max Holloway, Jose Aldo, even my friend and teammate Chad Mendez, you know. Yeah. I think that's the most similar, um, I guess, fighter that Volkanovski has fought that would be similar to me. You and know, Mendez I mean? dropped him. And, and, and Mendez, yeah, and, and he, he got tired, you know what I mean? He, he got tired, and uh, like I said, I'll never get tired. I, and I possess a different type of power, you know. Um, Chad, Chad wants me to have that fight too. You know, I, I helped him with his bare knuckle uh, debut. I, I, I've helped him his entire career. You know, um, yeah, he, he wants me to. He, he wants that fight for me, and, mm. and we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So then they're going to pair up. So we have Max and Volk. Uh, let me ask the question this way: Not, I mean, how if you were Volkanovski or Max, what would you say would be the best thing for each of them to do to win? Right. What, 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 is a, what is a path to victory for Max? What is a path to victory for Volkanovski? Yeah, I, I really feel like Volkanovski is so good at just staying in his, his shell, and he's like, he sets up his kicks with punches or punches with kicks, you know? Uh, 
and he doesn't really veer away from that. He's always feigning, he's level changing, he's shooting, he's, he's always keeping you guessing, you know what I mean? He's so good at that. But then Max, like, I just feel like, I feel like Volkanovski is gonna, he could pull off another decision, uh, but I, I, you never know what's gonna happen, that's the thing. But I also, like in the second fight, um, I feel Max dropped him, you know what I mean? I, I feel like Max's path to victory would be by catching him with something, you know, hurting him and staying on him and, and, and getting the TKO or finishing him somehow. But I feel like if it's just... Uh, Does Max yeah. have to take chances? I, th I think so. But look at look how he gets better with each fight. Both of them do. Yeah. And, and it, he comes back and then he fought Cater and look at that. It was a phenomenal performance. And then he fought uh, Yair the last fight and it's like, damn, he arguably one of the best featherweights of all time already, and then he's continuing to get better and better. It's like, it's like, you know, wow. <laughs> you know, so, but I think styles make fights, and I, and I kind of, I'm, it's hard for me to go against Volkanovski, you know. Mm. I, I don't know, it, it just is. How, how can you, how can you not, you know, he's, you know. I, Max did, well, they, they didn't count it on a uh, fight metric, but Max did drop him in the second fight. Yeah, yeah, to that head kick, right? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, no. Max he, dropped him twice in the first and second Oh, he round. dropped him twice. One was, one oh, was wow. with a head kick and one was with... Dude, you know you've seen this fight like 50 times, right? I, know, I mean, this I is this Dude, I haven't slept, I I haven't I watched slept in a while. I, I watched it, I obviously, live, or not live, but I watched it while it was going on, and then I think I watched it again, you know, just because everyone was talking about it. It was such a close fight, but then going back to the judges, I, I didn't know he dropped him twice. Are those 10-8 rounds, like, boxing? Like, no, how, no, like, no, no, no. Okay, no? no? Okay, so then who... Yeah, so then they... It's they're, they're still the, yeah, the first two rounds are clearly max rounds. It's after okay. that. It's where the yeah. uh, that's where the drama begins. So okay. To speak. Yes. Okay. But that's what I'm thinking. Like in the first round, first fight, it was a unanimous. What's the argument this way, right? So first fight was unanimous Volk. And I thought that was like four one. And, and I was the one saying that Volk's going to be the guy to. I just thought stylistically. The Aldo fight I mean? was a big giveaway too because I was yeah. like, ooh. Uh, yeah. And so then the second fight though, Max takes two rounds of him. Is there an argument to be like Max? might need that third fight to get all the adjustments in, right? Because it's kind of heading in this direction, maybe if you want to look at it from that sense. Yeah, and, and they're, they're also, they've been in there for 50 minutes, like 10 rounds. Like, they know a lot of what they're going to, what to expect in this, this trilogy fight. Um, so, I, like I said, I, I have no idea what's right. going to happen. Like, I have no idea. Close. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? I'm like you, dude. I go back and forth. Yeah. I spoke to Max in his uh, room this uh, Tuesday. Okay. And so, you know, dude, he, he's got a certain fire this week, man. Okay. And yeah. what does that mean? Who the hell knows, too? But, like, I don't know. I don't know. And, and maybe, like, yeah, he, he wants it back. Like, he's, he, look at what he's, he's done his whole career. And then it, it can be, it's just like the UFC moves so fast. It's like, with you know when you're out you're injured you're you know maybe you you lose a fight or whatever it is it's like i don't know it's like the people they stop thinking about you and then they start you know i don't I just it just moves everything moves so fast yeah. and it's like you get you have to do something exciting you have to do something spectacular uh for them to talk about you but then they forget about you anyways even if you go out there and have a highlight reel knockout it's like you're this hot topic for a few weeks and then you know another fight happens and then you're just like to the wayside you know but it's like just how everything moves and it's like man he's been the best he's fought the best guys his entire career but i feel like just this matchup is uh i don't know does volkanovsky have the number who, who knows we'll, we'll find out on saturday really it's gonna be good that was yeah. a good sale job there indirectly yeah. i was like after i'm like yeah where do i buy it you know like let's do that thing pay-per-view uh, really the more important conversation than anything we talked about is obviously your tattoos because this is a sport with some <laughs> shitty tattoos and you know you know who you are all out there are but, uh, but we oh okay. no no i'm gonna i'm gonna back okay. you here i we had michael kiesa yeah. on this couch and i and i love him and his tats are, are solid man they might be the best in the game for the style that i would care about you're up you're right freaking there do you know that do you feel that when you walk around, because there's like, you know, people, people have a lot of just bullshit, man. But, but you know, you're winning this battle, all right? That's, that's good to know, man. That's good to know. A lot, a you're lot like, no, BC, I don't care at all. But thanks for the passionate intro. I was, I was getting a lot of tattoos when I was younger, but then, like, everything means, means something to me. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you like the tattoos. But really, Luke is the, you know, he's the Simon Cowell of this, you know. Uh, yes, the horrible, you know, not British, but ter you terrible tattoos. person, yeah. And, uh, oh, I love tattoos. Okay, and okay. Luke, you know, technically... I'm, um, I'm sure it's there, but it's, it's the colors. You know, I like flashy packaging. Colors you know, that I, pop is the, the what they say that in the pop, industry. Pop, yes. in, the, in the ink industry. Yeah, I, so, I was getting this when I was, uh, I don't know, when I was like 19 or something. So it was like 17 years ago. It's, it's vibrant, and it was that much brighter when I got it. That's it's 17 that, it's years that, old? Yeah, it's that's, that, that's it's that, it's that, it's that light skin that I have. So when I bleed, that's right. why the blood's so vibrant, you know? 
And you have some kind of like tiki guy or something. Yeah, going my on there. chest. It's it's just the tiki mask from the Big Island, Hawaii. You know, is a picture of it. So, uh, Luke, he's in the he's in the pound for pound rankings right now. You know. Yeah. I well, know you're a big Darren Elkins guy. You love that. You know that shirt right fucking here. Well, you I know mean, what I'm saying. That's, you that's love that's that. That's not tag. one of my favorites. Okay, okay, okay. But it suits favorites. him. Yeah, yeah Elkins yeah. is a man. I mean, nobody wants to talk. Me. Does Robbie Lawler have a tramp stamp? Nobody wants to talk about that. I wouldn't say that around him. You know what I mean? I love Robbie Lawler. It's amazing. It was before tramp stamp. Yeah, that's right. He made it cool. I think actually. Yeah, yeah. Could have wasted it. Now, yeah, yeah, I mean, come on, Robbie. Yeah. Uh, no, we love Robbie. He's gonna, he's got a big fight on uh, 276 as well. Well, Josh, we got to tell you, man, uh, your story is a hell of a. It, I, I feel like yeah. we're just getting started with it in some ways. I know you're 37 and you're now at this pretty remarkable place in your career, but uh, I'm glad you stopped by, dude. You've got, you got some fire in your belly. You really well, do, man. You. And so, congratulations on the win over uh, Calvin Cater. And when do you think, lastly, when do you think you might get back, like in terms of like how you feel? When they, th it's well, obviously after who the hell fight knows. Week, yeah, like I'll, I'll get back to. You, are you hoping for last quarter, of 2022? You think? Whenever, man. If I'm getting that title fight, I'll, I'll fight next week. But yeah, I know that's not going to happen. They're fighting soon. Um, anywhere in the world that like they don't have to, they don't even have to call me. They know my answer. I've never said no to a fight. Hmm. Sean Shelby can contest to that. He he always. <laughs> that's a different gene. He, he, even even though like I've seen people say like, oh, he turned me down. I was like, well, I was never offered that fight. Um, but yeah, I've said yes to every single fight and it's always within like, who knows? He, he already knows 30 minutes. I get the call. I'm like, ah, fuck, let's do it. You okay. Know? I, I got to ask you, this matters to me. It'd be like me asking you, you know, if you were a vinyl guy, what do you listen to on record? You know, this is my shit. You're an action fight guy. What action fights like that, like get you going that you're like, that you look up to what it, you know, whether it's boxing, mm. MMA, like what are your classic history? You got Ward guy. What, what gets you going? Hmm. Man, I, I'd have to think about like my my favorite fights. Uh, you don't sleep on Hendo Shogun one. No, yeah, <laughs> oh, of course. Okay. I, I was I there? I, maybe I was at the second one. I was at the second one, but um, yeah, there's so there's so many like crazy fights that are just barn burners, and it's like like I want to go out there and I want to top those. You know, like even the Robbie Lawler you're talking about, Robbie Lawler and. Uh, Who's, uh, Who do you like better, the Condit one or the Roy McDonald one? The Roy McDonald, that's what yeah, I'm talking about. Talk about. See, he understands passion. I, 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 I want to top that, okay? I want to I top that one of these days, you know? Maybe my wife doesn't want to see that, but uh, like, I, I want to do it, you know? But who, <laughs> okay, then who was your action hero, just to close here? Who was, yeah. the, who was the guy that, that, you know, that you fell for? Did you have a guy? Were you a Tito guy? I mean, who was your guy, man? Like, growing up, my favorite fighter was Tito. Like, I, you know, I... I like just his his style, just his his relentless ground and pound, and but then obviously the sport has evolved so much. Um, dude, I don't know. I, I've just been a fan of the sport. You yeah. know, I, I've been a fan of the sport forever. So even to this day, I'm still a fan of these these fighters. I'm excited for 276 to actually get a sit there and watch it and I, I enjoy it. You know, I'm not fighting in a few weeks. I'm not like I'm not so I can sit there and actually have some fun. And we were just talking about this. Um, we're like, I don't think we've ever gone to a fight together and just like enjoyed it. I've gone to a fight a few weeks before a fight and for some teammates. And, you know, I, I think I was there when uh, it was Marias and, and Aljamain when they fought and he got that bad head kick knockout. That was a week before I went and fought. And I was sitting right there. I was like, mm -hmm. shit, I'm never going to a fight a week before my fight. You know what I mean? Um, Yo, here's the deal, though. They're going to give him really good seats. If they pan in on him and they're like, and like you know, they, they stay with it and the name are on the bottom, he's getting the next shot, bro. He's getting the next I shot. I believe that. Yeah. All, right, All right, let's do it. All right, it's going to happen. You, gonna you, happen. Guys, you guys talk to Dana for me. How's that? Yeah, he, yeah. he always returns our text. Yeah, he's, yeah, very, right. he's very yeah. good about listening to us. Yeah, he loves the media, too. Remember that hit job video we put out? You were starting that shit, all right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was hilarious, too. Well, Josh, thank you so much.